G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're continue the power ranking series that I try and do most weeks. This one's a little bit late, forgive me. The uh, sacking of Adam Simpson meant that I had to do an extra video yesterday and push this into today. But if you're unfamiliar with the concept, we're gonna try and rank all 18 teams in the competition kind of based on current form. I have to say, this, this by far is the most difficult version of this I've ever had to do. And I looked at last week's rankings and a lot of teams that I'd sort of marked harshly won unexpectedly or had the previously good teams and then had won a game. And because this video takes a particular look at the last five games, some teams have unexpectedly had a pretty good stretch of five games in a row. We'll get into all of that, but I know, I know that there's going to be some discontent with this and I'm still looking at it. I've changed a million times and I'm still not 100% happy with it, but we're gonna roll straight into it. So we're gonna start with the bottom four. This was relatively easy. Um, West Coast clearly the bottom team and uh, that has no end in sight, unfortunately. The only team to go 0-5 in their last five and um, you know another disappointing performance against Melbourne on the weekend. Richmond again, because they've won a game in their last five and probably still playing a little bit better than West Coast, maybe um, they go second last. North Melbourne have won and I couldn't justify putting them ahead of Adelaide. So North Melbourne have won two of their last five and have beaten the Eagles and the Suns in that time and had some pretty good losses as well. Meanwhile, the Crows have only won one of their last five, but there was a good win against the Giants and I thought they were pretty damn good against the Brisbane Lions. And I feel like because there was still a bit of a gap in quality between the bottom three and the rest, North Melbourne are just teetering on the edge of leapfrogging Adelaide, but I'm not quite there yet because I still think Adelaide have gone all right, particularly in the last fortnight. So that was the first tricky decision for me. Adelaide still in the bottom four, but not quite as far as the bottom three. So that part was the simple part, and this is where it gets really iffy for me. So in 14th spot, I've got the Gold Coast Suns. Now they've plummeted and perhaps unfairly because they've had some good games in their last five, but Consider this, it's, it's also about what the teams around them are doing, and we will get to that. But I've got the Gold Coast Suns as the 14th best team in current form, and I feel iffy about that because they have beaten the Bombers and the Pies in that stretch. Just above them, I've got Melbourne. And Melbourne, again, in their last five, they've only beaten North Melbourne narrowly, and they've beaten the West Coast Eagles, but they also did play really well against the Lions at the Gabba. So again, we factor in honorable losses to some extent as well. If a team's getting belted, that certainly hurts their ranking. And therefore, if they play really well against a good team and nearly win, like they did against the Lions at the Gabba, similar to Adelaide, I do factor that in. In their last five, you also include the bad loss to Collingwood, I thought, and the really bad loss to Fremantle. So that's why I have them there. And Collingwood have slumped to 12th. This is another one I feel uncomfortable about. I think I still had them in my top eight last week. I've really shaken things up, but it's just a byproduct of so many teams unexpectedly winning. And there's a lot of evenness to this part of the ladder. So to justify Collingwood in 12th, well, they've beaten North and the Demons in the last five. They've also lost two in the bounce. Bulldogs, the Suns, and the Bombers in that stretch, most recently against Essendon. Could the Gold Coast Suns be higher than the Pies? They probably could because they beat them week before last, absolutely. But it was at Metricon and it was close. You could flip that around. I also just felt uncomfortable about having, you know, Melbourne 14th. That would have them moving down a spot after a win. And Collingwood in 13th still seemed a little bit far. So the Gold Coast having lost to North, they're the unlucky ones. But again, every time I flip it around, I feel uncomfortable about it. Let me know in the comments what you think about that particular ranking. So then I have St Kilda jumping up. The reason why, they've actually won three out of their last five. They've beaten the Suns, the Eagles, and they've also most recently beaten the top team in the competition in the Sydney Swans. And their two losses were against two relatively good teams in the Lions and the Power, in particular the Lions, and they played well in that loss in my opinion. So if we're being fair and looking at a power ranking of current form, St Kilda's are starting to stack up and they've shot up to 11th in my rankings for that reason. The Power also shoot up, you know, a team that I'd started to borderline right off. I tipped them to lose to the Western Bulldogs. They are now 10th with a big win over the Dogs, an eight goal win, their, their midfield in particular, a big feature in that game. So they've only won two of their last five over the Dogs and over St Kilda, who is obviously slightly below them. They've lost to the Lions, the Giants and the Blues. So some relatively good opposition there, in particular, the Lions and the Blues. So then GWS move up into ninth with a good win over Carlton on the weekend. They've beaten the power in their last five and they've lost to the Swans, Hawks and the Crows. So a bit of a mixed bag there from the Giants, but they've also recently beaten Port Adelaide and their big win over Carlton is a big scalp and therefore they get rewarded for that in these rankings. Fifth to eighth is also a part of the ladder that I'm a little bit uncomfortable with. So I've got the Bulldogs sliding down to eighth. Again, their last five haven't been bad. They've won more than they've lost and 
you know, not many teams have actually done that. So in that time, they've beaten North Melbourne, they've beaten Collingwood, they've beaten Fremantle heavily, and that is a good win considering where Fremantle are in the competition right now. They were pretty disappointing against the power and they were very disappointing against the Lions too at home. So a real mixed bag. And as such, I've got them about the eighth most informed team at the competition. Essendon sliding back up. Again, a good win against the Pies, no doubt. They've only won two of their last five and their other win was against West Coast. They lost to the Suns, they lost to the Blues, then they lost to the Cats most recently. Now, in context, now that Geelong has played well after that, maybe we give them a little bit of a break for losing that game. Is Geelong back? We'll see. Let's talk about Hawthorne now, a team that I had really high in my rankings. I think I had them fourth last week. They are now down to six with their most recent big loss against Geelong. But if we're being fair and, and analyzing a run of form, Hawthorne's has been very good. So that's my justification for them still being in the top six, although that loss was a little bit of a concern and we'll see how they respond from that. One loss in their last five and that's two in, the, I don't know, eight or nine games or something for Hawthorne. So they're still playing really good footy, but justifiably go below Geelong who have now beaten the two teams below them in Essendon and Hawthorne in consecutive weeks. In that time, they've also beaten Richmond. They've lost to Carlton. They've lost to Sydney, who are two of the best teams of the competition. So Geelong's form is starting to rectify a little bit. They're starting to re-emerge as a major player this year. So I have them about the fifth best team in the competition. So then we get our top four. And again, this is tight. This is tight. And uh, I, I have shaken things up. I've got the Sydney Swans down in fourth spot. Now, if you're asking me, do I think Sydney are the best team in the competition and likely to win the premiership? I say yes. But if, like I said, we're analyzing form here and in the last five, they dropped two games, which is more so than any of the teams I have above them. So they've beaten the Giants, the Crows and the Cats, and those are all solid enough wins. They lost to the Dockers narrowly at home. They also lost to St Kilda most recently. So if we're being fair, Sydney need to drop down to about fourth spot because Fremantle is now the third best team in the competition, in my personal opinion. They've won four of their last five, one disappointing outlier against the Bulldogs, but generally that form is stacking up. And they've also beaten the Sydney Swans on their home deck. So third on the ladder and also third in my personal power rankings. I don't drop Carlton down. Carlton were 5-0 last week. Now they've added a loss to that ledger, 4-1, with a recent loss against the Giants away from home. Still a fairly solid performance, I thought, and the Giants may or may not be a good team. We're still learning. Such a hard team to play, it's the Giants, but I thought it was a good game, and therefore I don't mark Carlton too harshly. However, we have one undefeated team in the last five games, and that is the Brisbane Lions, who surged to the top of the power rankings, if we're being fair. So in the last five games, they've gone to Adelaide and smashed the power. They've beaten the Saints at the Gabba. They've beaten the Dogs heavily in Melbourne. They've beaten Melbourne narrowly at the Gabba. Really good game. And they held off a very plucky and competitive Adelaide side at the Gabba. So 5-0 and justifiably makes them the form team of the competition right now. So to run through some Brisbane Lions stats over the last five games, they're the number one team for inside 50 differential, they're fifth for clearances. They are first for marks, but interestingly, they are triple the next best team. So that's marks differential. The difference between them and their opposition, they are triple the second best team in that stat. I just thought that was interesting. Number one team from scores from stoppage, number three team from scores from turnover, and they're actually second in the league behind Sydney for expected score differential all season. So to clarify that, that's the difference between their expected score and their opposition's expected score. Over the course of the season, they are second, which kind of implies that over the course of the season, had they kicked straighter, um, you know, they'd probably be higher on the ladder. So there you have it. At the moment, Brisbane is the toughest team to beat in the competition, in my opinion, and it obviously helps they've got a really strong home ground advantage which they've kind of corrected now. Obviously, it started the season really poorly. Fremantle surged up into third. That could change. We don't know exactly um, how far that trajectory will go. I'm still comfortable with Carlton second over them, but Fremantle now leapfrogs Sydney, and justifiably so. And the other big mover is Geelong, who, um, you know, again, hard to read. Their form has been so good at times and so poor at other times, and maybe they've just clicked into gear and could be a force for the rest of the season. But that is my attempt at a very difficult edition of the Power Rankings, guys. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. I'm sure you'll all, uh, all have different thoughts about this. But it is just a moment in time and doesn't reflect, you know, how much I rate teams. I don't think Collingwood is actually the 12th best team in the competition. Same thing with Melbourne. I think in the last two weeks, Melbourne has looked a lot better and I expect that to change over time but I've done my best so let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.